Rakate Yahawa, Rakate Yahawa Shai, Kol Holon Yom La Yahawa, Baha Sham Yahawa Shai, Racha Hakwadash, which means all praises to Yahawa is the name of the Heavenly Father. Baha Sham means in the name. Yahweh Shah is the name of his only begotten son, who the world only called Jesus Christ. Baruch HaKodash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, only way we can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and the sincerity, all in charity. This is Brother Mathati from the Great Millstone Camp, the branch on Des Moines. Shabbat Shalom. And um, not sure what my title is lesson just yet. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning uh, more towards the, uh, the title of the true worshipers. You know, the true worshipers that worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And that's written out of the book of John, the fourth chapter. And, and our Lord Yahweh Shah said it out of his own mouth. You know, because ultimately what these guys is doing is futile, man. You know, see this guy, he's a, a, a um, he's an apologist for white supremacy. Just like vocab. See, this guy is a vocabian. That's why he used the word Israelism. You know. Because this guy want to sit here and say that this ain't this and that ain't that. Hey, it's a hell of what you got to say, man. You know, because the truth that have been so long without fruit is being declared now, man. And you can't stop the elect from being sealed. Because this word is going out and it's going to uh, accomplish in what the Lord sent it to do, man. According to Isaiah, the 55th chapter. You know? So all you different Israelite groups that's teaching, you know, contrary doctrine. All you vocabians and you Christians, man. You're going you, you gonna to find out. You know, and you're going to find out the hard way. But without further ado, I'm going to just get into it. John, the fourth chapter. <clears throat> Four, and I started 21. Yahweh shall say unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Now, how do you get around that? Because this guy likes to say, oh, well, you know, um... The Israelite Christians can, you know, uh, how, how did he say it, man? He didn't say Israelite Christians. How did he say it, man? You know, but it's the, he he's going along with that replacement, you know, uh, supersessionism, <laughs> right? That shit that vocab pushed, man, you know, which Yahweh shout out of his own mouth just clearly says salvation is of Israel only, man, All right? But let's keep reading. Verse 23, letting you know that this woman is not an Israelite. So here it is, according to Christian doctrine, whoever believes and repents can become a part of the covenant. Will not this woman say that <laughs> our fathers worshipped in this mountain? Did not this uh, 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 lady confess that she was an uh, 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 Israelite? So why did our Lord make the statement that he made against her, man? You see, showing you that there is no, <laughs> her being an actual heathen, she cannot convert. <laughs> You know, this right here, this account right here shows you that if you're not of the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, it doesn't matter if you try to cleave to the covenant. It doesn't matter if you say that you worship the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. If you're not a, 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 a part of the lineage, there is no salvation for you. And to get even deeper, the Lord is not even saving all of his people, man. He's only saving a remnant of his people. But let's keep reading this. Verse 23, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him. The most high is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now let's find out what the spirit and what the truth is, right? And it's all in the same book, the book of John. And these are things that Christians can't answer. They don't know what the spirit is. They don't know what truth is. This is the book of uh, what I, I said. Christians can't answer that, right? Uh, St. John 6 and 63, it says, It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profit of nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You see? So the father is looking for those who are going to worship him, who are going to serve him according to what? The words. According to the words of the book. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You see? Thy word is truth. So the father is looking for those who follow, who serve him and believe in him and follow after him according to what? The word. These precepts. You see? The book is the spirit. The book is the truth. Right? 
and there's a um there's a vibration that comes with the book because this guy obviously obviously this guy got the book but he ain't got the spirit that comes with the book you see see there's a spirit which is the holy spirit that has to be given unto the individual in order for them to understand the spirit in order for them to understand the truth you see the Holy Spirit, right, which is the spirit of truth, which is the spirit of understanding, allows us to properly discern between, uh, 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 you know, uh, the spider web. It, it allows us to to navigate the spider web. You know, because the book is a trap. <laughs> it speaks about, you know, those who wrestle with Paul's letters as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. And this is what these guys is doing. You Edomites that take hold of the book, who, who, who it says in Psalms, man, uh, um, who are you to take 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 the Lord's covenant into thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction? You see? That's why Yahweh said, he said this, he made this statement. St. John 7 and 38, he that believeth on me as the scripture have said, right? Because that's what the spirit is. That's what truth is, is these words. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You see, so we believe on Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, in the name of his only begotten son. As the scripture have said. And this is what the true worshipers would do. Because it was prophesied that the true worshipers. It's Isaiah 10 and 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel showing you who it, who, who it is, right? And such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more stay upon them that smote them, but shall stay upon the Holy One of Israel in truth. What is truth? John 17, 17. Once again. In the spirit of truth. You see that the Lord uh, gifts. Unto individuals, right? Wisdom of Solomon. 9 and 17 and thy counsel who have known except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above so the Lord sent down his Holy Spirit into certain individuals in order to rightly divide the word of truth so that the true worshipers can believe in spirit and in truth you see And this is how the truth that has been so long without fruit is being declared. Because the true worshipers are teaching or showing the proper way to serve, to worship the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son. The, verse 21, the remnant shall return unto the, the remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty power. And this is what the prophecies speak about all throughout the book, man. The remnant of Jacob. That's who the Lord is, is, is coming to save. So all this supersessionism, no, bro. You know, that's not that's not biblical. You're not a true worshiper if you're if you're teaching supersessionism. You're not a true worshiper if you're teaching that actual heathen can be delivered and saved with the Israelites. Because the Lord said in the book of Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah 30 and 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured and all thy adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. So when did this happen? That happened. That, that was accomplished already. That happened during that when. When when did the Israelite enemies go into captivity? Because we can go into the history uh, of, of the kingdom, starting with uh, uh, the Babylon the head of gold. Because the Persians and Medes ruled after that. And then the Greeks ruled after them. And then the Romans ruled after them. You see? Then you had a thousand year period according to Revelation 20th chapter. 
where Esau Edom, right, was was uh, uh, locked up, was was put in the dust as a nation. And it was prophesied for him to have a little season. That he would be loosed from that prison for a little season to deceive the world again. Right. And this individual, this Edomite, <laughs> well, according to my understanding, all those prophecies of Esau Edom has passed. Nah, -uh. It tells us in the book of Edris, right? Second Edris, the seventh chapter. The sixth chapter, the seventh verse, starting at the seventh verse on Don, right? The ninth verse in particular, it says that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So when we go back to that statue of, uh, of uh, 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 the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, starting with the head of gold, all the way down to the feet of iron mixed with clay, that's showing you that that's the, the revised Roman Empire, right? Which is ruled by the Edomites, and that that's when our Lord Yahweh shall return, because he represents that, that stone that smoked the feet of the statue. And who would be ruling during that time? Esau, Edom, according to Second Edges. You see, the spirit of prophecy is undefeated, man. And that's what we trust in. That's what we rely upon. Because the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy. So Rock the 39th chapter tells us to be occupied in prophecies, man. Right? So this is how we worship the Father in spirit and in truth. This is how we show forth ourselves to be the hopeful elect, man. The true worshipers. You see? Back in Jeremiah 30, 16, therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured and all thy adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil and all they that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. You see? So judgment is coming unto these uh, 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 to these heathen, man. Jeremiah 10 and 25, pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know thee not and upon the families that call not on thy name. For they have eaten up Jacob and devoured him and consumed him and have made his habitation desolate. So there is there not a judgment that's coming uh, uh, unto the, uh, 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 these heathen for the things they've done unto Israel? And this nigga, yeah, this Edomite nigga right here, right? Oh, we can't, we don't even know who Israel is because they're scattered to the four corners of the earth. No, nah, you dummy. It tells us in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, that these curses will be upon us for a sign and a wonder on us and to our seed after us, man. <laughs> right? So the prophecies are indicators. But that's showing, showing you he's not a true worshiper because he's not trusting, he's not believing in the prophecies. And it's because he don't know them. Amos 3 and 7, the Lord revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. You see? So this is how we know who the true Israelites are according to prophecy. This is how we know who the Edomites are according to prophecy. This is how we know who salvation is for according to prophecy. You see? Because what our Lord Yahweh Shai is coming to do. Let's read about it. <clears throat> let's get the one and two first. Revelation 2 and 27. 26, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. But hold on, but according to supersessionism, the nations are able to be saved. But Yahweh Shah is saying that he will give individuals power over the nations. Verse 27, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. What do you do with a rod of iron? And as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So this lines up exactly with what we just read in Jeremiah. All our adversaries that spoiled us will be spoiled. All our adversaries that afflicted us will be afflicted. And Yahweh Shah is coming to render that judgment, that recompense, as it is written in Isaiah, the 61st chapter. See, that's a part of the good news. A part of the gospel is the, is the, uh, how did the, how did the Lord say it? The year, the day of his redeemed. I think it says the day of his vengeance in the year of his redeemed. Right. But let me just verify it. Isaiah 61 and 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn. Isaiah 63 and 4 for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed is come. 
Who is the Lord bringing vengeance on? Who is the Lord coming to redeem? It says the Redeemer in Isaiah the 59th chapter, 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 in Isaiah the 59th chapter, the Redeemer, right, being our Lord Yahweh Shah, shall come to Zion unto those who turn from transgression in Jacob. You see, according to prop prophecy, kills all this madness that these guys are spewing, man. Whether they be vocabians, whether they be Dr. James Whiteians, uh, Christian Knights, and all these people, man. Even these pseudo uh, uh, Hebrew Israelites, man. You got actual Hebrew Israelites that believe in hell. You got actual Hebrew Israelites that call on the name Jesus, but they call themselves Hebrew. You got actual Hebrew Israelites that believe that that our Lord was born of an immaculate conception. This is madness, man. But see, once again, according to prophecy, it cuts all that. See, the promise that was given to our king, King David, was that the Messiah would come out of his loins. How is that possible? If Joseph wasn't his actual father. It's written in Romans, the first chapter It's written in Acts, the 13th chapter and many other places. Revelation, the 22nd chapter, where Yahweh Shah himself said he was the offspring of David. And according to the ancient Israelite custom, we traced our lineage through our fathers. That's why in Matthew, the first chapter, it names all men. Women bear children. Men beget children. You see, that's why it says such and such begot such and such. You see that? So this is all according to what the scriptures, this is what we're trusting in the word. We believe it on our Lord, Yahweh Shai, as the scripture have said, Lo, he come in the volume of the book, it is written of him. This is the record that the heavenly father gave of his son. So we're going to believe the Bible over you niggas. We're going to believe the Holy Spirit over you niggas. All you niggas, you Edomite niggas, you pseudo, <laughs> you black niggas, because that's what you that's what you are. A lot of you so-called Israelites, man, you, you, you're still in darkness, man. You know, so you Edomite niggas, you black niggas, <laughs> you know. It's over for you, man. It's over. You've lost. The spirit has won. It says truth conquereth all in first edges, the fourth chapter, man. The Wadi Ahawabasham Yahweh for the spirit of truth. You know? But let's go to this one. Revelation 13 and 10. He that leadeth in the captivity shall go in the captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And who are the saints? According to the book of Psalms. One thirty nine. In the last verse, it's not 139, it's 148. Yeah, I'm tweaking. Salakia. It's 148 in the last verse. He also, exult, he, uh, he also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shah. So this is the faith of the Israelites, man. All you heathen that had a hand of our downfall, you're, you're going to get paid back for that. This is the book of Obadiah. And it's showing you that can't no heathen be, how, how, how can a heathen be saved? So all these precepts that's talking about a recompense to the heathen, but if they if they repent and join the covenant, then, then what the Lord promised, because keep in mind, these are promises, man. And if you're saying that an actual heathen can be saved, then you're making the Lord a liar. You see? Because these heathen got a judgment coming unto them, man. According to what? Prophecy. Obadiah verse 15. For the day of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, right? The Israelites. So shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness in the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions, man. 
When did this happen in history? When did this take place? When was all the, when were when when was there a time period where all the heathen were punished and Israel was placed on top? And don't say, well, King David and during the time of Solomon, because these prophecies is after that. What we just read in Jeremiah was way after King David and King Solomon. What we just what we read here in Obadiah was after King David and King Solomon. What we read in Revelation was well after that. You see. <laughs> you can't you can't use the the the, the, uh, the throne, the uh, the kingdom of of Solomon to, to, to you know, to to, uh, to use that as a cop out. No, dog. When was there a mass judgment upon the earth, man? For the atrocities that these heathen have done unto the children of Israel. You see, that's what the Bible speaks of. The day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed has come. Revelation, the 18th chapter. There's a punishment that's coming upon Babylon the Great, which is with parallels Isaiah the 47 chapter. So that lets us know that Isaiah the 47 chapter wasn't fulfilled yet. And when you read that Isaiah 47, it says that the Lord was wroth with his people and gave them into the hands of the king of Babylon. And he didn't show them no mercy upon the ancient. Did he very heavily laid his yoke? Who is that speaking about? Because if you talk about that, that's, that's talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Then why did John see it in the book of Revelation 18 chapter? It parallels Isaiah the 47 chapter perfectly, man. Thou saidest in our heart, I, I, I sit a queen and am no widow. I will not load a loss of children. Isaiah and John the Revelator seen the same thing. So it couldn't have been talking about Nebuchadnezzar. It couldn't have been talking about ancient Babylon. So now it begs the question, who is it talking about now then? That a judgment is going to come upon a whole nation for what they've done unto the children of Israel. Christians can't answer that question, man. You see? Salvation is for the Israelites. <laughs> and it's plain, you know, because you can go this route and you can talk about the judgment, the pending judgment that's going to happen to these heathen. Or you could just simply go the route and show, well, who was the ministry to? And Matthew, the 10th chapter, is Matthew 10 and 1, and when he had called upon him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these, the first Simon, who was called Peter and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Labaius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Yahweh shall send forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right? And in John the 10th chapter, Yahweh shall clearly made a statement and said, This is John 10 and 16 and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now, what could this be talking about? Well, the precept here says Ezekiel 37 and 22, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king to them. So who is the them? Who can it be talking about when we when we read up? It's talking about the northern and southern kingdom. <laughs> you see? So that other sheep is still talking about Israelites, man. So the Lord is calling the elect of the nation of Israel, not just the southern kingdom, but of the northern kingdom as well. So all 12 tribes are being called back unto the fold. You see? And we know that through what? This James 1 and 1. James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Mashiach, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. 
Same way Peter started out his letter. 1 Peter 1 and 1, Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shamashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of the Most High, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shamashiach, grace unto you and peace be multiplied, man. You see? Now, who are those strangers? And look, they gives you cross-reference with James. Who are those strangers? Well, It talks about in the law that if thy brother be a stranger, right? Clearly called him your brother. But let's just let's just go into the NLT. Let's just read 1 Peter 1 in the NLT. This letter is from Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai. I am writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners. In the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and his spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed him and have been cleansed by the blood of Yahweh Hamashiach. You see? And who does Yahweh blood cover? This is the book of uh, Galatians 4. There's so many ones that's in my head. Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, the Most High sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Why is Paul speaking this to Galatians? If Galatians are Gentiles, when they were never under the law. Showing you that these are Israelites, man. Because those were the ones that made a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice. Psalms 50th chapter, the 50th verse. You see, the spirit of prophecy is undefeated, man. And it was prophesied that our Lord Yahweh Shai would come on the scene through David's lineage to give repentance to the children of Israel and forgiveness of sins. Acts 5 <clears throat> and 31. Verse 30. The power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shah, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him have the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Nobody else. Nobody else. Because the Lord said that if the heathen would sacrifice unto him, he would reject it. So why would he send his son to offer himself if he would only reject it? This Isaiah 40 and 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the aisles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing and they are accounted to him less than nothing and vanity. This is how the Lord views the heathen. So why would he send his son to die for heathen whom he count as nothing? Doesn't make sense. Edris makes that very clear. Second Edris. Is it five? Second Israel 6 and 56. As for the other people, which also come of Adam. Let me start at 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou made as Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, right? Everybody on the earth come out of Adam because everybody come out of Noah's three sons, right? Which Noah was a descendant of Adam. Of him come we all and the people also whom thou hast chosen. God's chosen people that Peter was writing to. Verse 55. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. And as for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. 
And what did the Lord say the judgment was that for? He that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. All they that devour thee shall be devoured. And Edris didn't understand that during that time. We understand it now that when our Lord Yahweh Shai returns, what is he coming to do? This is the book of Revelation. Six and one. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. What is he conquering? That's why in Daniel 7 and 9, it says, I beheld to the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. And the son of man was brought unto him, man. There's <laughs> no way around these prophecies, you know. So you can call on Jesus to your face turn redder. You could call on Yeshua to your turn blue. None of that is going to avail you, dog. None of that is going to work, my nigga. Revelation 19 and 11, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness doeth he judge and make war. Make war against who? Christian, Christians, what? Christians don't, well, come on, dog. That's a question to ask Christians, man. Who is he coming to make war against? Because when you read it, matter of fact, verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of the most high. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth forth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the who? The nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty power. So he's coming with vengeance, man. Against who? See, in Revelation, the first chapter, it speaks about those that pierced him. It's Revelation 1. Um, behold, he cometh with clouds. Yep, verse 7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so am I. So he's coming with vengeance. He's coming with judgment. Like the Lord said, man, now would I uh, arise and shake the earth. You know? He said, I will not only shake, shake the earth, but heaven also. This is the book of uh, Sirach. This is the book of uh, Sirach 16 and 19. The mountains also and foundations of the earth shall be shaken with trembling when the Lord looketh upon them. That's not the one I was looking for. Says a, a low he cometh to shake the earth, shake heaven. That's a good one. That's Isaiah 13, which is a future prophecy, which is what the destruction of America, which lines up with Isaiah 47, which lines up with uh, Revelation 18. Joel 3 and 16 is a good one. Yahweh Basham Yahweh shall also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake, but Yahweh will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. It didn't mention nobody else. Haggai 2 and 6, for thus saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And that's and that's through what? That's through this uh 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 the second death that the Lord is going to bring on the earth. Here it is. Hebrews 12 and 26, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. So, so the Lord is coming in, in 
a miraculous fashion, man. You know, I, I, I just couldn't even think of a word to put it in, you know. But I'm going to end it there, man. It just, just went in the spirit, you know, just based off of, you know, the couple statements that this guy has made, you know, the opening statements he made. I ain't really go all into it. But these guys are defeated. They threw. They're done. You know, the truth that have been so long without fruit has been declared, man. Deceit shall be quenched. <laughs> you know, as for faith, it shall flourish. That's what's happening. It's too late for your white supremacy, right? So-called. It's too late for your red supremacy, man. You're trying to get Jake to return to those weak and beggarly elements, dog. It's over. The elect shall not be deceived, man. The elect is going to stay upon the Holy One of Israel in truth. So they're going to focus on what's written, and they're going to follow that to the best of their ability. It says a stranger will they not follow, man. It says they will flee from a voice that they don't know, man. And, and we don't know you, nigga. You know, hey, so Lord will, I hope this was at a fine. Thawadi Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shah, for giving me spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shah, Barachah HaKwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and sincerity, all in charity. Shabbat shalom.